Good day everyone. This is group 3 and we are going to present to you our topic which is intellectual revolutions and society. Our topic covers how intellectual revolutions altered the way modern science was understood and approached. For this discussion, intellectual revolution should not be confused with the Greeks' pre-Socratic speculations or mythological explanations about the behavior of the universe. Instead, it is in favor of more rational explanations, initiating analytic and critical thought. So, ano nga ba ang intellectual revolution? In science and technology, intellectual revolutions refer to the series of events that led to the emergence of modern science and the progress of scientific thinking across critical periods in history. Which means that, Intellectual revolution shows how society was transformed by science and technology with the different discoveries and inventions due to the wants and needs of people. It helps us in developing our logic reasoning and thinking. It makes us to have curiosity in our surroundings which makes us to ask questions about a lot of things like how does these things work or develop. Three of the most important revolutions were Copernican, Darwinian, and Phrygian Revolution. In the words of French astronomer, mathematician, and Freemason Jean Sylvain Bailey, 1976 in Cohen of Way Humans 1976, these scientific revolutions involve a two-stage process, first sweeping away the old and establishing the new which means that these revolutions are in themselves paradigm shifts, which is resulted from a renewed and enlightened understanding of how the universe actually behaves and functions. Intellectual revolution emphasizes the idea of universal human progress, the most pragmatic systems in science as well as free use of reason, logic, and critical thinking. Intellectual revolutions that define society are the intellectual revolution that defines society information that we assess in the past, present, and future. The Copernican, Darwinian, and Phrygian revolutions challenge the long-held views about the nature of the universe. Thus, these revolutions were often met with huge resistance and controversy, which will be discussed by my co-members. First, let us proceed to the Copernican Revolution by John Akalugay. Copernican Revolution What is Copernican Revolution? What comes in your mind when you hear the words Copernican Revolution? So to start with Copernican Revolution, this is a shift in the field of astronomy from a geocentric understanding of the universe centered around the Earth to heliocentric understanding, which the Sun is the center of the universe, as articulated by the Polish astronomer named Nicolaus Copernicus in the 16th century, this shift marks start of broader scientific revolution that sets foundation of modern science and allowed science to flourish as an as autonomous discipline within its own right. Basically, when you say Copernicus revolution in a smaller and shorter Context. It is about the shift in the intellectual or understanding about the center of the universe from uh, first earth being at the center of the universe and then a shift or change to a sun or to the sun as a being the center of the universe. A long time ago, in the early times, people questioned what days of what created the days and nights. So they had to question what causes the daytime of the daylight and what causes the night time or the night or the evening or what causes the dark. So there were a lot of questions before about these days and night or the sun and the moon. And people, they wanted to understand that heavenly bodies like stars, moons, planets are. So this era of this age people start to wonder what is the stars all about or what are planets about and what are their moons all about 
So the people stated to question about the universe, the days, the nights, and the sun, and the moon, and all the heavenly bodies. And the invention of the telescope allowed the people to take a peek at the outer space, but more importantly, it is also intrigued with them to know what was actually out there. At this time, they had to invent or telescope was invented, so people had to see what was there in the outer space, just like what you can see right there in your screen. Many of these philosophers agreed that planets move around in a circular motion, and this and that these movements created days and nights, among others with the use of telescope and many inventions among scientists they have agreed what causes that day and night is the revolution are the planets in a circular motion. And there came a famous philosopher named Claudius Ptolemy, stated that the planet as well as the sun and the moon move in a circular motion around the sun. This is the first philosopher or the first sign of scientist and astronomer as well stated that what causes the day and night and the circulation of motion around the earth. And this is how it looks alike. And this coming back, Claudius told he authored or he established this theory, geocentrism in this theory. It says that the earth is the center of the universe, just like what you can see there on your screen. That the sun and revolution explain the existence of days and nights. He believed that the earth was at the center of a concept known as a geocentrism. In geocentric model or geocentrism, it is a theory of the structure of the solar system in which earth is assumed to be at the center of it all. The most highly developed geocentric model was that of Alexandria or the person that was mentioned just minutes ago it was a generally accepted until the 16th century after which it was suspended by heliocentric model such as that of Nicolaus Copernicus so this theory has been challenged by the theory of Nicolaus Copernicus in the 16th century this man Nicolaus Copernicus a Polish mathematician and astronomer at the same time challenged the Ptolemy, Ptolemy model or the previous theory which is the geocentric model. So what is the new theory? This new theory has been developed or established by Nicolas Copernicus which is known to be the heliocentric model or heliocentrism. It suggests that the center of the solar system is not the earth but rather it is, it is the sun. In heliocentric model or heliocentrism, it is a cosmological model in which the sun is assumed to lie at the near or the central point of the solar system or the universe. Well, the earth and our bodies, our planets revolve around the sun. In the 15th century before Christ, the philosophers Flawless and Hesitas speculate, speculated separately that the earth was a sphere revolving around some mystical central fire, which they referred to the sun that regulated the universe. The idea of Nicolaus Copernicus was rejected. It was rejected at first by the public. It applied many since the religious belief had taught them that the earth was created first before all other things. So there was a conflict conflict between the teaching of the church and the theory of Nicolaus Copernicus because based on the te teachings of the church in this time it was believed that the earth is the beginning of everything so there was a contradiction of belief and that's why this theory was rejected by the public. Copernicus was even persecuted as a heretic because his teachings were against what was widely accepted by religion. After some time, astronomers realized that the Copernican model simplified the orbits for planets. It also answered issues that could not be explained using the geocentric model. Other works that supported this model started to emerge as well. It was eventually accepted by the people in a period 
which was called the birth of modern astronomy. So the moment the people had accepted the theory of Nicholas Copernicus that the sun was the center of the universe. This era began what was known as the scientific revolution which resulted in the transformation of society's thoughts and belief. Darwinian Revolution Charles Darwin 1809-1882 formulated his book of the origin of species in 1859 that presented evidence on how species evolved over time in the descent of man 1871 that introduced the idea of all organic life under the realm of revolutionary thinking. Darwin proposed the theory of evolution by natural selection where organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. The changes that allow an organism to better adapt to its environment can help it survive and have more offspring. So, dito po yung videos ni Charles Darwin. Here's some information. So, panoorin po natin. His theory of evolution by natural selection, now the unifying theory of the life sciences, explained where all the astonishingly diverse kinds of living things came from and how they became exquisitely adapted to their particular environments. But what does he have to do with the Darwinian Revolution? In 1859, there was a groundbreaking revolution in both the scientific and religious realms. The Origin of Species, authored by Charles Darwin, was published. The book changed how people approach biology forever and has the fundamental impacts on modern science, religion, and the other aspects of society. The origin of species by natural selection is the process by which certain inherited traits makes it easier for some to thrive and multiply, changing the genetic makeup of populations over time and is also called the survival of the fittest. He began his expeditions regarding his book around 1830 where he was so obsessed observing nature that he studies fossils, birds, barnacles, earthworms, fishes, tortoises, insects, to some extent even his own family. He noticed the animal's incredible adaptation to environment, the ways in which organisms tend to be ideally shaped to enhance their survival and reproduction in specific environments. The most famous example of this are the variation of beaks Darwin observed in the remote Galapagos Islands of the coast of South America. He has observed closely related finch species all of this quite similar to mainland species. He noticed the variation of beaks and how different they are in every island depending on the availability of food. If there were hard seeds, the beaks were thick. If there were insects, they were skinny and pointed. If there were cactus fruits, the beaks were sharp to puncture the fruit's skin. We describe origin of species by natural selection based on Darwin's observations in the four basic principles. First, different members of a population have all kinds of individual variations. These characteristics, whether their body size, hair color, blood type, facial markings, metabolism, or reflexes are called phenotype. Second, many variations are inheritable and can be passed on to offspring. If the trait has to be favorable, it does future generation no good and it can't be passed on. Third, Population can often have way more offspring than resources, like food and water can only support, or what Darwin calls as the struggle of existence. Lastly, given all this competition for resources, heritable traits that affect individuals' fitness can lead to variation in their survival reproductive rates. This is just another saying that those favorable traits are more likely to come out of the top and will be more successful with their reproduction. Not only is the phenotype is changing, it is also important to remember that genotype or the genetic form is also changing. There are two main points in his theory. All life on earth is connected and related to each other. This diversity of life came about because of the modification in population that were driven by natural selection, survival of the fetus. Pag sinabi nating Darwinian Revolution, isa sa sa mga naging controversial na intellectual revolution like Copernicus na kung saan inupo siya ng mga non-followers ng certain religion at that time, ganun din kay Darwin. So, si Darwin na isa sa mga naging English naturalist, biologist, and geologist. So, in 1859, pinablish niya yung book 
and the origin of species na nilalaman dito ang pag-aaral niya tungkol sa kanyang theory of revolution. Ano bang sinasabi niya dito? Yung population down ng organisms, they pass through a process. Tumadayan sila sa process natin na tinatawag niyang natural selection. So sa natural selection na ito ay dumadaan dito ang organism and ang magsusurvive is yung fetus. Only fetus would survive. So yun, dun siya nakilala. So yung organism, sabi nila, meron silang ability to adapt doon sa kanilang environment and would gradually change into something that would be more competitive to survive. So yung process doon na tinatawag niya is evolution. So as supposed doon sa biblical teaching God created as yung mga organisms daw for a thousands of years. According kay Darwin, ay nag-undergo ng genetic change. So, itong genetic change na to is isa sa mga naging pinropose ni Darwin. is necessary to happen para maka-adapt yung mga organism sa environment at dahil sa mga organism ay uh, nag-compete sa resource na available sa environment. So, sila na parang physically nag-involve, magkaroon sila ng mga bagong katangian para maka-adapt sa environment and then para maka-survive sila. So, yung mga nangyari sa genetic changes sa kanila na ipasa ito or na i-transfer, uh, di umano na to sa mga naging offsprings nila. Sa kanilang mga anak at kahit nagkaroon pa ng panibagong species, for example, yung mga reptiles naging birds, yung ape naging ikaw, so yun. So, naging controversial na theory mga ito sapagkat contradictor sa doon sa teaching na religion. At that time, because the religious community believes the biblical version of creation of the earth and all life forms, so that time, divided yung mga tao. Some believe Darwin yung iba, rejected it. Yun, so it sparked a debate between the church and the followers in the Darwin. So, next one is the Freudian Revolution. So, sino nga ba si Sigmund Freud? Si Sigmund Freud is an Australian neurologist, born on 1856, bago pa na yung bento ang mga telepono, radyo, eroplano, mga sasakyan, at iba pang imbento bago pa ang kanyang kamatayan. Namatay siya noong 1939. Freud founded psychoanalysis. He described that the brain can be segmented into compartments. He developed an observational method to study human's inner life mainly focuses on human sexuality and evil nature of men. Nakilala si Fru dahil sa kanyang mga idea at kung paano niya trinato ang mga taong may kapansanan sa isip. Ngunit, bago pa niya na ang mga ito, ng mga taong may kapansanan sa isip ay tinuturing siyang baliw. Sa kanyang research, hindi sanhi ang physical disease sa mental illness o pagkabaliw ng isang tao. Dahil ito o ay isang psychological na sakit. Ngunit nagbago ang pakikitungo ng lahat sa kanya nung na-develop ang psychoanalytic theory of personality or tinatawag na psychoanalysis. So ano nga ba ang psychoanalysis at kung bakit inimbento ni Sigmund Freud ang psychoanalytic theory of personality or tinatawag na psychoanalysis? Psychoanalysis It is a scientific method of understanding inner and conscious conflicts embedded within one's personality, springing from free associations, dreams, and fantasies of each individual. So, nung naimbento ang psychoanalysis, ang mga psychology or psychiatry ay tinignan na rin nila ang mga early childhood trauma na nagkukos ng mental illness o pagkabaliw ng isang tao. So, next slide is, we have here the three elements or tatlong bahagi ng ating isip na humuhubog sa mga ugali at personalidad ng isang tao. Ito ay ang id, superego, and ego. First one is the id. It is the most primitive of the three structures. It is concerned with the instant gratification of basic physical needs and urges. It operates entirely unconsciously. So, id, ito ay ang pinakaunang bahagi ng ating unconscious mind. 
Ito yung mga dahilan kung bakit marami tayong pagnanasa or kung bakit natin gustong punan ang mga basic needs such as foods, clothes, and etc. Id is not aware of what is right and what is wrong. Next one is the superego. It is concerned with social rules and morals. It develops as a child learns what their culture considers right and wrong. Superego naman ay kabaliktaran ng id. Superego is aware of what is right and what is wrong. May pakialam siya sa mga social rules or sa madaling salita, may konsensya. Superego, ito yung mga nade-develop dahil ito yung mga natututunan natin simula pagkabata pa lamang. Next is the ego. It is the rational, pragmatic part of our personality. Its job is to balance the demands of the id and superego in the practical context of reality. So, si ego naman ay responsibilidad niya or responsible for our katwiran or practical reasoning. It is considered to be ourself. So, its job is to balance the demands of id and superego. So, meron ako dito halimbawa na nagpapakita ng id, superego, and ego. Halimbawa na lamang, nasa ay isa kayong restaurant. Sa kabilang table, may kamakain ng fried chicken, burger, fries, and etc. Sa iyo naman, sa inyong magkakaibigan, ang kinakain nyo lang, milk tea. So, sabi ni Ed, gusto kong kainin ng fried chicken niya. Fried chicken ng kabilang table. And sabi naman ni Super Ego, hindi mo pwedeng kainin ang fried chicken. And sabi naman ni Ego, teka muna, pag-usapan natin yan. Bili ka na lang ng sarili mong fried chicken. So, as you can see, si Ed, gusto niya lang punan yung pangangailangan niya or pagnanasa niya doon sa pagkain. Hindi niya iniisip kung magagalit man yung may-ari nun. Basta hindi siya aware sa tama o, tama o mali or kung ano mang kahantungan ng ginawa niya. Basta gusto niya lang punan yung pangangailangan niya. Si Super Ego naman, sabi niya, hindi mo pwedeng kainin ng fried chicken. Siyempre, may konsensya si Super Ego. Alam niya kung ano ang tama at mali. Kaya sabi niya kay Eid, hindi mo pwedeng kainin ang fried chicken. And si Ego naman, sabi niya, Teka muna, pag-usapan natin yan. Bili ka na lang ng sarili mong fried chicken. So, meron siyang katwiran sa dalawa na binabalansin niya yung gustong sabihin nitong dalawang ito. Kaya sabi niya, bumili na lang siya ng sarili niyang fried chicken. At least, wala siyang kinuhang ibang fried chicken. Walang mali sa ginawa niya. Nabalance niya yung ano. Yung kagustuhan ni id and super ego kumbaga siya yung mag-aayos or mas pa pinapabuti niya yung kahantungan ni id and super ego so next slide is ginamit din ito ni Fred sa kanyang mga theory of psychosexual stages of development meron ditong dalawang complex na nagpapakita ng psychosexual stages of development which is the Oedipus complex and Electra complex. So, unahin natin itong Oedipus complex. This child have feelings of desire for his or her opposite sex parent and jealousy. Anger toward his or her same sex parent. Oedipus complex, ito yung he feels that he is competing with her father or nagsiselo siya or nagkakaroon siya ng galit sa ama dahil meron siyang desire sa kanyang mama. Ang Oedipus Complex, ito ay yung mga batang anak na lalaki. Ang ibang mga batang anak na lalaki naman ay gustong gayahin yung mga ama nila sa mga nakikita nito na pagtrato ng kanilang ama sa kanyang ina na pwede niyang gamitin in the near future sa pakikipagrelasyon sa iba. So, next one is the Electra Complex. Electra Complex, this is the child have feelings of desire for their 
fathers and jealousy of their mothers. So, itong Electra Complex naman, parehas lang sila ni Oedipus Complex, pero ang pagkakaiba lang nila sa Oedipus Complex, ito yung mga anak na lalaki. At ang Electra Complex naman ay para sa mga anak na batang babae. Or batang babae, I mean. <laughs> so, meron dito short video na nagpapakita or para mas matutunan natin ang Fujian Revolution at kung paano na-evolve itong psychoanalysis. So, let us all watch this. So, what is psychoanalysis? Psychoanalysis is the method of understanding the mental functioning and the steps of growth and development, and it seeks to explain the complex relationship between the body and the unconscious forces in understanding the role of behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. Psychoanalysis frequently looks at the early childhood experiences in order to discover how these events might have shaped the individual's current personalities and actions. Psychoanalytic therapy is a form of in-depth talk therapy that aims to bring the unconscious or deeply buried thoughts and feelings to the conscious mind so that repressed experiences and emotions can be brought to the surface and examined. These are short-term treatments that are better suited for short-term problems such as anxiety or depression. Freud believed that personality was composed of three fundamental elements. The id is the impulsive part of our psyche which responds directly and immediately to the instincts, as it operates within the unconscious part of the mind. Usually, this form of process thinking has no comprehension of objective reality and is selfish and wishful in nature. The ego. This is the part of the personality that must deal with the demands of reality. It helps us control the urges of the id and makes us behave in ways that are both realistic and acceptable. In addition, the ego responds to and strives to achieve pleasure and avoid unpleasure. Finally, the superego, whose demands are managed by the id, is responsible for the limitation of satisfactions and represents the influence of others, such as parents, teachers, and role models, as well as the impact of societal and cultural tradition. So that ends our discussion. We hope that you learned something. Thank you and have a good day, everyone.